The Eppendorf and Science Prize for Neurobiology is important to Eppendorf because it reflects what our founders more than 75 years ago defined as the company's purpose, improving human living conditions. As a leading life science company that develops and manufactures products for life science research labs in industry and academia worldwide, it is important for us to support scientific progress. When the prize was first established in 2002, we wanted to create a well-respected global prize that focuses exclusively on young researchers. We felt it is important to find and support young talents at a very early phase of their career. Our partnership with science is very special because we created this award in a shared spirit of a long-term project. Both partners have the same interest and share the same values, and we are continuously working together on improving this prize, creating a first-class scientific award. The biggest challenge in picking the winner this year was the number of high-quality entrants. We saw a number of excellent essays and in the end we had to make a decision because we have one winner and we have two finalists and there were quite a number of extremely good. Um, they were good in terms of the writing of the essays and also the underlying science behind the experiments. My research involves developing computational methods to make sense of the actions of animals as they interact with the world around them and relating their actions to recordings of neural activity in deep brain regions such as the hypothalamus. We look at population activity of different hypothalamic nuclei as animals are interacting with each other in aggressive encounters or reproductive behaviors or defensive behaviors. And we try to relate the animal's actions to what these cells are doing and build an understanding of how different regions of the hypothalamus collectively shape animals' behavior control and their moment-to-moment -moment actions. The regulation of adipose tissue physiology through the sympathetic nervous system controlling immune cells. So the adipose tissue physiology is controlled by both the sympathetic nervous system and the immune population. So what we tried to do was to see how these two systems integrate to elicit uh, an healthy adipose tissue microenvironment. So what we found is that there is a brain adipose tissue circuit in which mesenchymal cells act as a connection between the sympathetic nervous response and type 2 innate lymphoid cells. And they do this when they receive input from the sympathetic neurons. They can start producing a neurotrophic factor and this neurotrophic factor is able to activate innate lymphoid cells to induce a healthy adipose tissue microenvironment. To understand my research, you first have to understand that the brain isn't entirely made of neurons. And one of the other cells in the brain, called an astrocyte, has been known for a really long time to react in the context of diseases and injuries that affect the nervous system. It's called becoming a reactive astrocyte. And while we've known that that happens, we haven't really known whether it's good or bad for the brain. So what my research found is that this response, reactive astrogliosis, occurs in a broad range of human neurodegenerative diseases and injuries. If we stop the response, it seems really beneficial. Fewer neurons die, and in mouse models of neurodegeneration, the mice live a lot longer. And finally, we figured out that at least partially that effect is mediated by these cells secreting a toxic lipid. Putting that all together, it suggests that either preventing that response, or preventing the secretion of this toxic lipid, could be really tangible therapeutic targets in the context of neurodegeneration. I, I took a kind of circuitous route to neuroscience. I grew up loving coding, and my parents were both computer programmers. I, I was really into computers and robotics, and I just learned about neuroscience, I suppose, in high school, and I really enjoyed thinking about how brains solved problems and the difference between that and the way that you solve problems when you're writing a program. And I just enjoy thinking about if you have a network of neurons, this very distributed, very messy system, how do you get that to compute things and to do so in such a flexible and amazing way? 
What motivates me in my research is looking at the interaction between neuroscience and immunology as drivers of organismal physiology, and this makes the work really challenging but also really fulfilling. I think early career researchers should end this because it is a very good training exercise. Even if you do not win the prize, you learn how to create an essay that is concise, tries to capture the attention of the reader, and it very often gives you an idea of what you want to talk about when you present your um, scientific results. I decided to submit a prize entry for three main reasons. First, is because this prize is based on an essay, I think that it emphasizes the kind of science communication skills of being able to disseminate your science to a broad audience that I think is really important in science and there's not a lot of opportunities to practice in the current academic pipeline. Second, because I study the non-neural cells of the brain, which are a less studied and less recognized aspect of how the brain functions, I thought that having a project uh, on non-neural cells be recognized by the prize would be really validating for, for the kind of things that I study. And then third, uh, the award having now run for over 20 years has this really um, impressive alumni network. And I think um, becoming a part of the group and having access to that alumni network is incredibly valuable. The Eppendorf in Science Prize is truly an international award. And this is reflected by the list of awardees in the past and also the present ones. They were of American, Chinese, French, German, Hungarian, Swiss, Japanese, Chilean, and New Zealand nationality. So it really proves that this is a global prize. We work each and every year on encouraging young talents, young neurobiologists to apply for this prize. I think this prize will help my research reach a wider audience, people who wouldn't necessarily care about a paper on hypothalamic attack neurons, people who I collaborate with who are in a statistics background or a machine learning background or traditional experimentalists or molecular biologists. This prize helps me to distill out work from a variety of papers into something that kind of summarizes what I worked on. And I think it will really help to reach a broader audience and bring across what we're working on and why it why I think it matters.